The Overton Bridge in Dumberton, Scotland, is famous for a bizarre and mysterious phenomenon of so-called dog suicides. When dogs get on the bridge, they seem to be suddenly and inexplicably compelled to throw themselves off of it, for no apparent reason, with many of them ending their lives that way. What could be making them do something like that, and why, out of all the places, in Dumberton? This is the Dog Suicide Bridge. The story that has been widely reported on in the past 20 years goes something like this. Most sources claim that since the 1950s, when the phenomenon apparently started, somewhere between 300 and 600 dogs have jumped from the Overton Bridge, with at least 50 of them dying as a result of their jump. Apparently, once the dogs were brought on the bridge, they suddenly felt an overwhelming urge to jump down on the rocks 50 feet below the bridge. The dog suicides are often explained as a paranormal phenomenon, as a result of the bridge and the adjacent manor, the Overtone House, being haunted, either by a man who threw his own child from the bridge in the 1990s, or by a ghost of a woman who lived in the Overton House hundreds of years ago, called the White Lady of Overton. The reality is, however, a little bit more complicated. Although the phenomenon has been reported on even by respectable media such as the New York Times, the origins of the story are a bit unclear. So first we must ask whether there even is a mystery to solve. The thing is that pretty much all of the articles from the past 10 years give the same information about hundreds of dogs jumping from the bridge since the 1950s. But none of them cites any actual sources at all. There are no studies or statistics behind the numbers. Most of the articles and videos refer to the British tabloid Daily Mail that was the first to refer about the phenomenon in 2006, but even the first mention fails to provide anything about how it got that number or any of the information. In fact, Brian Dunning from the Skeptoid podcast found out that according to the owners of the Overton House, Bob and Melissa Hill, only three dogs have jumped from the bridge since they took over the house in the 1990s, and the local veterinarian clinic has only treated four dogs that have suffered injuries by jumping from the bridge during the same period. So there are really only six or seven confirmed cases in the past 20 or 30 years, which doesn't mean that there can't be more of them, but rather that the claims of hundreds or even dozens of dogs jumping from the bridge seem to be very exaggerated, and not at all grounded in reality. But although it was probably less than a dozen cases over several decades, the question is still there. Why do they jump? Apparently, most of the dogs that jumped from the bridge were long-nosed breeds with strongly developed sense of smell. This pointed to a possibility that they might have jumped because they smelled something under the bridge. And later, an investigation of the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds and Wildlife found that nests of mice, squirrels, and mink were present under the bridge. In particular, mink give out a strong scent that for some reason dogs seem to be extremely drawn to, much more so than to the scents of other animals. And mink were first introduced to Scotland in the 1920s, and they started massively breeding in the wild in the 1950s, at a time when the first dog suicides allegedly started to happen. As it also turns out, the edges of the bridge have a particular height that is low enough for the dogs to be able to jump over, but high enough so that the dogs can't see what's on the other side. Meaning that when the dogs suddenly smell the mink scent and jump over the edge following their nose, they don't actually know they're on a bridge. While the mystery of the so-called dog suicide bridge and its explanation are interesting, the version repeated by media is far away from reality. A story about seven dogs jumping from a bridge over 30 years would likely fail to gain any attention at all. 
And so most of the media went with a much more interesting, but essentially false narrative that was then repeated over and over again without ever caring to verify whether the basic facts are true or not. This is what's called circular reporting, and the fact that so many media are guilty of it and failed to do any fact checking at all is really the most interesting part of the story of the Overton Bridge.